This patient was referred to me by her family doctor asking to excise in this lady of 54 years of age this lesion which was present in the keratinized tissue of the upper incisors. It was a tumor-like lesion with a strawberry-like appearance with a size of 2 cm and with a fast evolution. In just two months it had grown to the size. Clinically, the patient didn't present any pathology in the gingiva or the oral mucosa, no gingivitis, no periodontitis. Radiographically, there was no problem to be seen either. The incisors did not show any mobility and we took a detailed medical history. The patient explained that in the last months she had noticed some loss of weight problems with her balance, also tinnitus on the left side, she had started to have some hearing problems, she felt, she felt, she felt fatigued, tired. From a differential diagnosis point of view, since there was no other pathology in the mouth, we didn't rule out that this was a oral manifestation of a systemic disease, so before, before removing the lesion we sent her back to her family doctor to take a blood test. And it was seen that some inflammatory markers were slightly increased, like the sedimentation rate, leukocyte, creatinine, she had some anemia, but everything quite inspecific. We removed the lesion, we sent it to the pathological anatomy department, and also the results were not very specific. They saw granulation tissue with a big chronic inflammatory infiltrate. But taking into account that we didn't see a real cause which was associated to this lesion, I decided to send the patient to the internal medicine department. There they took a more specific blood test where they saw an increase of the of PCR, microalbuminuria, and also the anchor antibodies were positive. A chest CT was taken, they saw nodules in both lungs, and in the brain, MRI, they saw inflammatory processes or infectious processes in the internal, in the, in, in the inner ear, in the mastoid, these areas. The diagnosis was vaginous disease based on the lung and kidney affection, the histological exam, the polyarthritis, the oral lesions, the otitis media, and the increased levels of anchor antibodies. Thanks to the collaboration of all these healthcare professionals. This is very important because this is a disease with a very low prevalence. And apart from having this low prevalence, only in 2% of the cases, the first manifestation of this, of this disease is in the oral cavity. And taken into account that in 80% of the cases, the kidneys are affected and that the patients can die in a short time because of a multi-organic failure, the early diagnostic is key. So we can answer yes, it is important to improve this communication. This has been said by the World Health Organization since 2010. It is important to work together between different healthcare professionals to improve the health care systems and of course the results at the patient level. Also some publications say that the lack of communication and cooperation can be responsible for up to 70% of the adverse events that happen in our patients. Why is it important in our field, in the dental office? Because as Miguel say, says, the mouth is not just a box with teeth, it is connected to the rest of the general health, as we've seen in the clinical case I just presented. Also, Nudia Valcorva, for example, already spoke in this webinar about the very important relationship between periodontitis and other systemic diseases. Dr. Mariano Sanz also has related this. He spoke in, the, in these webinars about the relationship with severe COVID. But also our population is aging. We see more and more patients over the age of 60 in our offices who take very well care of themselves, who are doing really well, but still 80% of them have some pathology or take some drugs. But also many of our patients, especially those over the age of 40, present 
some risk factor. These are patients who see themselves as healthy and since they do so, they don't go to the doctor, to the physician. We also know that many of the risk factors associated to periodontal diseases are the same risk factors as those who are related to other general diseases. And therefore, it is key to implement in our dental offices these modifications of these risk factors, which can be modified. Because this will turn us into much better professionals in our specialty, in the oral cavity. We will be able to treat much better the periodontal diseases, for example, but we will also be able to prevent other diseases. We also know that patients who present more than two risk factors have an increased risk of suffering neurological problems, kidney problems, cardiovascular diseases, and therefore the early diagnosis is key. But we also know that if we diagnose periodontal disease at an early stage, we don't give time for all these pathogenic factors to, to, to appear, which are going to relate it with, with systemic diseases. So once again, early diagnosis is key. But for that, we have to work closely together with all the other healthcare professionals who, are, who, are, who can get in touch with the patient. And this will lead to an improvement at all levels for our patients. As we can see in this study, which was done in Milwaukee, in 1,800 patients attending a dental office, 8.2% of these patients needed a consultation with a physician from this 8.2%. In 32% of the cases, the initial dental treatment plan was modified. And in 8% of the cases, in 8% of the, of the patients, they had to start a medical treatment which they were not undergoing before. This is going to lead to a better health of the patient and to prevent the adverse effects I mentioned before. But it seems also that still at present, physicians and dentists work in parallel universes. And if you ask both sides why we don't work together, We all understand that the cooperation is going to lead to a better treatment to the patient. The patient is going to benefit, but still, we see some obstacles, like the definition of our areas of competence, the lack of knowledge we have about the other specialty. The dentist has, has been used to work on his or her own, not, not used to work in a team even if this is changing a lot at present. Some physicians don't see the dentist also as, as with a degree which is similar to, the, to, to theirs. They don't see them as equals. But if we ask both sides to offer some proposals, I think some proposals are, proposals are really in, interesting. For example, it, it has been proposed to establish interdisciplinary networks with personal contacts so that we meet on a per on a regular basis, because this way, if we know each other, we can get rid of this lack of trust into the other part. Also interdisciplinary approaches, not only in pre-grad, in pre-graduate education, but also in continuous education. And this is being done very, very nicely. A good example would be the series of webinars we are right now. Also, the development of multidisciplinary guides, like those that we have for diabetes, for example, between the EFP and the International Diabetes Federation. And what can we do in the, in the dental office? Well, as we have said so many times, we can help in the screening of the risk factors in the general diseases. Also, Lady Castello Rutia is going to speak after me about what the pharmacists can do from the community pharmacy point of view. Javier Diez is going to speak from the point of view of primary health care. And Jose Enrique Villares is going to speak about the role of the public administration also, trying to integrate us all in the healthcare system. And I would like to finish with this quote of Annabel Tenenbaum, who says that, to evolve from the compartmentalization 
of the professionals towards shared and common responsibility. Because as Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. If we do so, we will be able to put the patient in the center of the healthcare systems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Serrano, Cristina. It has been a very smart introduction. And yes, you have prepared the floor perfectly. This is very important also to mention the importance of all the parts who are in, involved in, in healthcare. Thank you very much. And now we will speak with other actors like community pharmacies, which actually are are quite similar to us and they have a lot of contact also for the general population and the periodontal population so later whenever you want the floor is yours well thank you very much for the invitation i'm sure that i'm going to learn a lot in this session it's a pity i couldn't attend the previous webinars because after seeing your your level and your commitment i'm i feel really sorry for it, but I'm, I'm going to learn from you slowly. I've been able to know you and in the short time I've known you, I've learned already a lot from you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I'm sure I'm that many of the things I'm going to say are going to be mentioned also by my colleagues, because we have spoken previous, uh, previously and we have seen that we all share the same vision. So I guess we will repeat some things, but well, the idea is to underscore certain messages. And I've, I'm sure that after, after this, you are going to leave this webinar full of energy, eager to get to know the other parts and wanted to work with them. The first slides I I want to show are two slides I, I used recently for a session about smoking, but I I guess you will identify it with it with them because I feel identified with you and you will understand why. Well, the title of my lecture where I used these two slides was the community pharmacist as one more warrior in the fight against smoking. This is this is why you see the this this warrior here. But we are we are used to, to work on our own. We are alone in our pharmacy, just as you are in your dental offices. It's not the same as in a healthcare center where you have the nursery, medicine and so on, or a hospital. So here, every pharmacist, here we have one pharmacist in one pharmacy, another pharmacist in another uh, pharmacy. And thanks to our scientific society, we were able to to get in touch with each other and to work as a team and to convey the same message. And I think that also this is what you can do in your scientific society. For us, this was a huge step forward. But we also noticed that here we had the patient, which is always in the center of everything, as we've said. And here we are as community pharmacists in our, in our scientific society. And we talked to the patient about different pathologies, different situation, but also, of course, we had the dentist there. You are there in your dental offices and you also are in contact with the patient. Also, we have the primary healthcare professionals, we have the specialists, we have the nursery staff, and we have other healthcare professionals who speak with the patient and have contact with the patient. You can see how, how many warriors are in contact with the patient. So we saw that in order to improve all these things and always thinking in the benefit of the patient, we should improve the relationship between the pharmacist and the dentist, the communication with you, and this could benefit also the patient at the end of the day. The same with the primary healthcare professionals, nurses, and so on. Also you with the primary healthcare professional, with the nurses, and suddenly, as you can see, we have an incredible network here. We can see how the whole communication uh, with this patient can be improved this way. This is an, an image we prepared in our society to explain how the communication has to run in all these uh, directions. 
And here where it says other healthcare professionals, we could put in a, a lot of different people. So the message we want to convey and what we want to want to, to want to achieve is is to achieve this goal. The patient in many cases goes to the pharmacy and asks about an, an oral problem or what else. And then he goes to the dentist and then goes back to the pharmacy. So this is in many cases the flow in the pharmacy. In other cases, the patient goes directly to the dentist and goes afterwards to the pharmacy. It is necessary that the message that is conveyed to the patient is coordinated. And that's the same message so that the patient is not confused. Here I show also what are the things that we are doing well in the community pharmacy and what we are not doing so well in the field of oral health uh, field. I think we are quite accessible as a group. We are there in direct contact with the patient 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think we are the healthcare professionals where you don't have to ask for an appointment. You just call over the phone or you just go to the pharmacy and you can consult with somebody. We also know the patients because even if you don't believe it, they come to the pharmacy on a daily basis in many cases when I tell this to my family that I can't believe it. So we have a lot of contact with them on a very regular basis. And also in many instances, they don't, they don't have contact with other healthcare professionals. Because maybe they're healthy, maybe they're young, or maybe they just want, don't want to go to the doctor. This is also an advantage we have, and we should take advantage of it. Regarding education, yes, we have training, we have education, but sometimes the pharmacist has to know about everything, and maybe we're lacking some education there. So I put it in between. This is good, but this is also something that can be improved, and we have to work on this. So in this letter to the three kings which i'm going to to finish with i will ask you also for help so that you can help us to to train to learn in this field also we would like to have more resources visual aids for example working together with you something that we can give to the to these patients where we have a very close contact also we we use we should use consensual protocols coordinated with you and other healthcare professionals, you dentists and all the other parts which are today present also in this webinar. So the right side is what we should improve and the left side is what we have right now. And well, the training with, you know, in health, in, all healthcare professionals have to improve that training every day. Regarding the oral and dental health, this is a very important section for us in the pharmacy and actually takes up quite a lot of space in the pharmacy. Usually it's placed in the hotspot. The hotspot is that, is that place where you end, when you enter a store where you directly are looking at, and we have a lot of rotation there. It's really an important place inside the, the pharmacy. And how do we act with the patients in that part? Well, the patients come and say, what could you give me for this? This is what we call by indication. Or they, they come with a prescription from you or from the family doctor, from whoever, and there we have a conversation, they ask us. Or the patient can take it directly there because it's very accessible. You know that in the pharmacies, before we had a very small exposition in a very big, uh, very large back room. Now it's just the other way around. We don't have space in the back room and it looks like a supermarket outside. Well, the patient can take it pick it up directly or sometimes then came with an emergency it hurts a lot please give me whatsoever so the, these are the situations we can face what can we do from the community pharmacy point of view we can inform about hygiene habits oral hygiene and other ones we can use also these leaflets or visual aids we are we have asked you for we can give it to the patient we also can organize workshops we have a, a, sm a small aula where we organize workshops with patients. Also, we've done it for children, for example, about oral health. And since we're very accessible, well, these are some things that we could develop more. We also stress how important it is to, to go to see you, the dentist, at least once a year. We explain also that they should brush their teeth properly 
which is something they in many cases forget. The use of dental floss, mouth rinse, also tongue cleaners, things that we sometimes forget about. And we also reinforce in certain specific situations like smokers or some risk patients that has, has been mentioned before in diabetes, pregnancy and so on. This message was, has been mentioned here also, how the oral health influences the general health. This is also something that we can stress in the pharmacies. And of course, we have to reinforce the message of the dentist. If the patient comes with a prescription, we have to explain how to do it. For example, if they take antibiotics, we have to insist that it is important to take the full prescription of the antibiotics. And also, we have to know also when a patient comes to us, and when do we have to refer them to the dentist or the primary healthcare professional? Imagine, for example, an after which hasn't healed for a long time. We have to think about all the things that this could be and we have to know how to refer this situation. Also, certain campaigns. It's true that every year we have one month of oral hygiene, oral health, together together with the General Council of Pharmaceutical Associations. But yes, this is something that we can work on also. Because in community pharmacy, well, here we I've put from a baby to until, until an, an elderly age, we are working on all these ages. From the use of pacifiers, of teething rings when they should start, to brush the teeth with toothpaste, without toothpaste, when they should go to the dentist for the first time. In the case of children, the same. What type of toothpaste they should use, or what toothbrush would be adapted for that age. For those who start to undergo orthodontics, how to have a proper hygiene, the toothbrushing technique, which I already mentioned, and which we sometimes forget about. Also in cases of MIH and traumas, for example, this happens also. Some, sometimes the child fell down just in the park b beside our pharmacy and they come to us and we have to know what to do with them. We have to know where to send them to. And, and for example, if we send them there, we have to explain what they should do with that tooth that they lost. With elder patients, oral hygiene and toothbrushing technique is still an issue we have to advise which would be the proper toothbrush, the use of interproximal devices, dental floss, and tongue cleaners, as I mentioned. And there are different types of, of situations and different healthcare problems. When they ask us, we should have a basic training or if possible, more than basic training, training to, to be able to, to offer a proper recommendation and also to know when we should refer them to you. Also now with COVID, the importance of a proper oral hygiene and after an infection, for example, how important it is to change the toothbrush and so on. It looks like little details, but if we put them all together, at least they are important. Er yeah. Emergencies, as we've mentioned, and the use of antibiotics. And in the elderly population, the use of dentures, how to clean them, how to take care of them. The same is true for implants. And I hear I would also insist in the smoking cessation programs at all ages. And patients who take many different drugs when they come for the medication and they s complain about a dry mouth, for example, we can also help them with certain medications. It would be just an example, but there, would, there are many examples of this. And the different medication treatments, which is the same as what I mentioned about the patient who takes multiple drugs. As Miguel said, since I'm, a, I'm part of the CNPT, I would like to, to take this opportunity to mention this protocol for smoking cessation. I already said congratulations and I still say congratulations for that. We from the, in the community pharmacy, we also have our own protocol. We have to underscore the importance of giving brief advice and to do it from an inter interdisciplinary point of view. So if you do a little intervention or, or not so little intervention, and we from the 
community pharmacy, we reinforce that message, the chances of success will be higher. So if the message is coordinated and it's the same message, of course, much the better for all of us. It's also time dependent. The more time we devote to the patient in small, in small parts, the better the results. So if we complement your message from the pharmacy, as soon as the patient leaves the dental office, goes to the pharmacy, wants to buy a mouth rinse, from a pr mouth rinse for example, and we reinforce that, that message, you can imagine how important this could, this could be. And this is what I mentioned about the letter to the three kings. I would like to ask for protocols, for visual aids, leaflets. We are really willing to work together with you and other healthcare professionals, really. Also, the referrals should be consensual. This is also giving us a lot of safety. For example, an after which doesn't heal, when do I have to refer the patient? Or after what time? Or a gingivitis? When should I send the patient to the dental office? Common education, common training, so that you can help us to, to to get better trained and we can also help you. Visual aids, leaflets, and this is just a personal, a personal wish. I'm sure that all of you are not affected by this, but sometimes in the pharmacy, we, at least we in the, in the Basque country, we have official prescriptions. But in many cases, we get strange papers where somebody has written down a name of an antibiotic with just a scribble, for example, without a license number, without the name of the patient and so on. So in order to make your job easier and also in order to make our relationship with the patients easier, this is an official petition, please. Please use the official prescriptions for the benefit of the patient and to in order to offer the patient a better service. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lady Castello Rutia, for explaining the daily work in a, in a, in a pharmacy, which, which is quite similar to a dental office. Yes, yes. You get in contact with persons at a very basic level, but the basic level is the important one if you want to reach the whole population. Thank you very much. I think we should write this letter to the three kings together. It's true that, for example, in the field of education, we're working a lot at SEPA to, to have education programs together with the community pharmacies. And well, the prescriptions, it's an important issue. But well, I mean, the handwriting of us physicians, yeah, no, we can understand everything. Yes, this is a problem that we still have with our handwriting as doctors. Yes. Thank you very much, lady. Thank you. Now we will continue with another very important issue, which is the relationship between the dental office and the primary healthcare professionals. It's also a very important issue. And for this, we have with us Dr. Javier Diez Espino. We have him there. Hi, Javier. He's Dr. Medicine, specialist in family, family and community uh, medicine. He's also working in the field of general dentistry in Tafalla, Navarra. He's there working in the trenches. He knows what we are talking about. He has worked in a lot of epidemiological studies, basically about diabetes. And together with Cristina Serrano, he is very active in the diabetes working group of the Spanish Society of Periodontics and the Spanish Society of Diabetes. He is president of the foundation Red GDPS with the goal of improving the the life of patients affected by diabetes type 2 and up, and he's a great person thank you very much for being here thank you very much miguel well i'm starting to share my screen i would like to thank you and the spanish society of prodontic sepa for this kind invitation and also i would like to thank the other speakers because it's been really interesting and i'm enjoying it a lot I think we're going to repeat some things. And Jose Enrique, he will have to say just, well, he will just have to say the last comments on, on some things. As Miguel said, I'm a, I'm a family doctor. I've been working for 34 years with the same 
group of patients and I've also worked and I was responsible for a teaching unit in family medicine and also a director of primary health care. I'm tutor of, of students and I teach at the, at the I teach at the university also. I hope that I will be able to explain something which can be useful for you. At present, with all these issues related to our pandemic, we've seen that nobody is isolated. Nobody's an island. We all need each other. And we have to, we have to approach common projects with one goal, which is to improve the health of our fellow citizens and to improve the quality of life. And I think that if we, are, if we work on this, we will be able to achieve many things if we are not only navel-gazing. I would like to show some images because we always speak about mortality. But this is a web page, if you want to write down this, Witzup, you can write it down here. This is from the World Health Organization also. And this square that you see here, this is, this is the number of years lived with disability in Spain in the population of 50 to 69 years. Years lived with disability. We see that some diseases which we think are very important are not that important. But others like back pain or diabetes, here you see the percentage of disability with all the years of life of the population you can see that 8.7 percent are due to diabetes if you see it dark it means that it's increasing if you see a lighter color it means that it's reducing we are speaking about a very important age group apart from maybe that most of us uh, are in that age group well not all of us but some of us are in this age group and you can see also disability due to oral problems. I think sometimes we don't think enough about this. And it's almost 3%. It's 2.7% of the total years lived with disability. But it's here, closer to other diseases which are like more important. Well, as you said, the mouth is not just a box of, with teeth. For many of us, uh, as primary health care uh, physicians, we just see the mouth as an unpleasant previous room before we reach the throat. These are data from 2015. Now the numbers are a little bit higher. We saw that in Navarra, 40,000 citizens of, uh, of, of the whole population have, have, these, have these problems, diabetes. And, he, and diabetes is is, so to say, the, the queen of the prom here, the queen of the party. And we see that all the oral diseases are, have, are quite important. This is what I see in my dental practice, many things. As Forrest Gump said, my office is like a box of chocolate. You never know what's going to come. But these persons don't have only one problem. They have many of them. We have 400 with, hyper, with high blood pressure with 400 with hyperlipidemia, there's 100 with ischemic cardiopathy. And with this, also we have to add anxiety, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease. There's a lot of variability in a, in a general practitioner's office and also oral diseases. This is a graph which we call the Benidorm graph. This, this is, these are the reasons why we, why we care about our patients. The chief complaint. What we more, what we see most is here, in this bluish, bluish green, at least for male persons, where sometimes we have some problems with detecting shades. But here we see, this was cardiovascular diseases. Here in green we see psychological problems. We see also motor problems, traumatologic problems. Met and endocrine problems. But you can see how important, for example, the cardiovascular problems are in our practices and also mental health. Sonia Mirabet 
spoke the other day about the importance of the mouth for the development of other diseases. But at the end of the day, we are speaking always about the same. The same risk factors of oral and dental problems are the same risk factors as the risk, risk factors we face for the other diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and other types of degenerative diseases. So we we are really working on persons with multiple risk factors and we have to act on them. This is a graph which I like a lot. It was made in the University of Wisconsin in the United States. This, well, they say that when we measure what we want to achieve with what we do, we have to think in 50% in length of life, but also 50% in quality of life. And what one of the things which are usually surprising is the the small but crucial importance of the clinical care. Only 20% of the 100%, which is the impact on the health of the community. The most important factor are the social and economic factors, education, employment, money, financial means, the physical environment and health behaviors. And here we have a, a lot to improve. But this is so important that it also influences this. And we could say that probably this 80% is a little bit outside of our practices. But this is where we should work here. And we're going to do it much better. But here, there are many things which are escaping, which we're not doing well. So we're working on a system which is perfectly designed to achieve the results that it achieved. And by the way, we have a system which provides very good results. But it's, let's say, reaching also the roof of its own capacities. And therefore, it's important not only talking about the relationship between primary health care and the dentists or pharmacists, pharmacies, but the whole healthcare systems, all healthcare professionals, we should change a little bit our, our way of acting. And also the public administration, I'm sure, and Jos Enrique is going to speak about this. We have, we have an exponential increase of the demand and a very rigid supply. We have, we have a lot of fragmentations. We, have, we professionals ask for more and more. We have more and more technology. And also the pharmaceutical issues are starting to get important. On the other side, we have this fragmentation of care. Not too much importance on prevention and promotion. And we have seen this deficiency now with these pandemics together with a regulatory rigidity and also a financial frame that we have to change. If we don't change this, nobody will stop this because we will have more and more problems and we will not be able to act on them. Because the solution is a good organization and an orientation towards prevention. As I said, our care is fragmented. This is a famous Indian tale where they placed wise man with with a with their eyes uh, blindfolded and asking and asking them to touch an elephant to say what they're seeing and this is it, in the scientific world information flows but in the care it doesn't flow so much and in we had politicians here we had we would have probably many politicians here who still think that the reality is very fragmented too why do, do we have to transform because if we don't the pay to price is, is very it's going to be very high. When I was thinking about this, I, I saw this poem of Gustavo Adolfo Becker and I said, I would like to, I decided to place this poem here because I, I, I love this piece of poetry. So we have to transform our care institutions. And here we are, all of us. Here we have the dental office. Oh, we have the pharmacy here, primary health care, hospitals. But we have to create a bigger interrelationship with the patient and the reference population in the focus of our attention. I, I mentioned before that we, 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 we can all agree if we all focus on the patient and we do it for the patient. If not, it's very complicated. So everything we do, as you can see, this, this, this is a slide which is modified from Rafa Bengoa, who spoke about, about the the tele-monitoring and the, the, online, uh, the uh, online consultations. And you've seen how much we've improved this year in this. This is a scheme by Berwick, the triple aim. Everything that we do has to be focused on achieving 
health goals, health aims and the population. Also the importance of the experience and the care to deliver the best care to achieve this improvement and we have to do it for a reasonable cost. But what happens? Usually if we start to speak about these things we don't speak too much about the health of the population. We speak quite a lot about new technologies, new drugs and so on. And we speak a lot, maybe too much, about the financial means, about the euros. In many cases this is conditioning the rest, because this is an investment, it's not a cost. I would, I would write the investment, not cost. I would like to put this in the present situation with, with our pandemic. The new technologies are important, but if you see here over 10 years, what is really impacting more is how we are able to deliver this care to the population. We're seeing it with a vaccine. We won't be able to control anything if we are not able to bring the vaccines to the people, to the people all over the world. The technology has helped us. It has improved a lot. But if we cannot bring what we have learned to the to the biggest part of the population, we won't be able to achieve it. So we have to organize ourselves in a different way. We have to organize towards quality. We have to go do it at, at a, let's, if possible, favorable cost. But we're not speaking here only about technology or only about management. Every contact is an opportunity. This was, this, this was published in a Spanish journal, a newspaper, a study about health and 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 and, uh, and quality of life, lifestyle, and they say that eight out of ten patients have gone to the doctor and six out of ten have gone to the dentist in the last year. Always women more than men. Well, this gentleman here could be me today when I when I left my practice. But we have to insist that every contact is an opportunity for prevention. I think this is where we should focus. This is what I, this, these are my patients. These are quite, quite old data, but that year, 97% of my patients had come to the healthcare center. Fortunately, I didn't have to see them all myself. But you can see how many contacts we have then. So to bridge the gaps, to take advantage of synergies between different professions and different environments, in this case, primary healthcare and dental offices, it seems something really essential. Every contact is one opportunity, as I said. And here in these actions, we can do carry out preventive actions. We can approach oral problems with repercussions on the general health. We have seen this, for example, with periodontitis. We also have seen that that it can lead to problems with diabetes and high blood pressure, COPD, and so on. For this, we also have to share this information and have a proper communication. At the right, you can see this is a page which I translated from a guide which was um, developed by our colleagues in Turkey, Turkish dentists, about diabetes. I translated this, but after translating it, I said, there's something missing here. The dentist is asking me for information. I provide him with information, but I don't get any information back from him. So if the colleague who has seen one of my patients and had taken the blood pressure or the fine crisp, for example, or, or has given some advice about smoking, for example, it would be nice if I could finish and complete this afterwards. We have to approach the problems from all sides. And this is something that I usually tell my students and my residents. This basic structure of how to approach the problems in the practice, based on four questions. What is, why is the patient coming today? It can be a flu, it can be a heart attack. If it's a heart attack, we have to focus on that, of course, and we forget about the rest. How did the patient evolve from the last problem I, I treated him? How did he evolve from that ulcer, that pneumonia, or this? problem here. What happens with the chronic diseases? Because this is something that we forget. If the patient comes because of sciatic problems, we and maybe we don't we don't remember the diabetes they have. This happens to us and I'm sure it happens to you. And also what preventive activities would be advisable in that patient? This is very important. We should even if in many cases we don't have time to ask this question, but this is just a suggestion I sent. So our patients have to go they don't have to go 
from one hand to another one, but hand in hand. Like these trapeze artists who have to be really synchronized not to fall down, especially if there's no safety net. Our patients in many cases fall down without a safety net. And this is something we have to take on account. Continuity is very important here because it improves the effectivity, efficiency and the adequacy of our actuations and it generates a lot of satisfaction of the patient. If you in your offices do things that the patients are not expecting, they will value it a lot probably and if they relate it with us and we relate it to you even more. And also we will avoid duplications. Why? Because we will work as a team. Because we should not forget that, well, this is, doesn't have anything to do with the organizational structure. This is a very intentional act and it has to be very technical and very professional. This doesn't have anything to do if I work here in this area, on this dental office or there. This is something that we have to offer always. In this, in this sense, I've loved, I've loved the, the presentation of the protocol of assessment of metabolic and cardiovascular risk in the dental office. Because it's that part of this proactive attitude, which I mentioned, that we all have to have in the pharmacy, in the general practitioner, at, at the nurse, with the nurse or with the dentist, to be proactive, to be able to detect things, because if not, we will miss things. And we have to integrate our care. I don't know if you know this young girl. Well, maybe now she's not that young as on this picture. But if we start to treat somebody, if many healthcare professionals start to treat one person, we start to apply many, many treatment plans, many guides. We have to integrate everything because this young woman can be subjected to all of these things apart from what you are going to do to that, to her. And well, and at the end, it's, sometimes it's rather, rather tough for everybody. This is a quote I love. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. This is great. We have to break to break our synergies at work is very complicated and we have to do a lot of effort. But I think we have important professional resources, both you and us, and we have to work in a coordinated manner because at the end of the day, is for example, like this Robin. He's not very, he's not afraid of the branch breaking because he, he trusts on the wings and we have to do the same thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Diaz Espino. It has been a fantastic presentation and very personal. And I thank you for that because you have invested many years of experience and you have explained the things in a very clear way, especially also the communication between the different healthcare parts. In this case, maybe between dentists and primary healthcare which is very important. And I think this is one of the common points we're seeing in all the lectures today, how to integrate the patient in a system where the patient is not confused. I, I loved your picture with the trapeze artist because it's true. They, they should go hand in hand, not from one hand to another one with a very objective criteria. So thank you very much, Javier. And now let's see what's the position of the public administration about this issue. And for this, we have Dr. Jose Enrique Villares. He's physician, master in management of, of dental systems, of, 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 of medical management assessment. And he has a very long title. He's the technical director for healthcare processes in the Joint Health Commission of the Community of Madrid. But I, was, I would stress two things of his CV. First of all, he has been a reference in the last 30 years for the oral health in the, com in the healthcare department of the Community of Madrid. This is really important. And also, um, when we asked him about his CV, he said, the most important thing is that I'm a general practitioner and I'm deeply in love of, with primary health care. This is an important part of his CV. So, Dr. Villares, thank you very much for being here. And if you could speak about this maybe complex issue, but uh, maybe somebody who is as passionate as you, you can explain many things. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Carasol. Good afternoon to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank Sepa and Dr. Carasol for inviting me to participate 
in this Aula Dentate, which has been organized in such a fantastic way. And we have learned many things about our vision in the interrelationship we should have between the different healthcare professionals. As the last speaker, the problem is that maybe I, I have to repeat things, but I want to explain what the public administration has, has done, for example, so that the primary healthcare, oral and dental departments can participate in the promotion of health. And I will explain now how now the dentists and the hygienists are integrated in the primary healthcare teams and the community of Madrid and the healthcare centers. In 2009, we we used the the freedom of choice in healthcare in the community of Madrid in the unique healthcare area to to give an answer to something which was a big heterogeneity in the dental care of children and adults in the different oral healthcare departments which were organized there. We organized a working group and I would like to, to insist on the value of this because we had professionals of, the, of oral health. We had one reference persons for oral health in, the, in all the different departments and also the hygienists were there. They formed a technical team and technical group and we we did this SWOT analysis to see to to assess the dental care in the community of Madrid. We saw, for example, that there was a big heterogeneity in the in the units of oral or oral healthcare, a very irregular distribution of human resources in different areas. Also, the fun the function and the competence of the professionals were not really well defined. Also, the materials obsolete materials with a, a lot of shortage in, in that in that sense. We also have very heterogeneous services depending on the area where we were. The records were taken on paper and to assess the quality of our care was, was almost impossible to do. Assessing the individual records of every patient with the type of records we, we took then in those days. Another important aspect, which I always have criticized, because I think that's the definition of the failure in our prevention, we had a very important presence of, of tooth extractions, more than prevention and, and other uh, therapeutic activities. And also, we didn't know really the, the present situation in terms of oral health in the population of Madrid. So we established three basic pillars who acted as a support for the dental care to, to be used as a specific resource in these basic teams of uh, oral care teams of on the community of Madrid. First of all, we tried to homogenize the, um, the care in Madrid. We wanted to get to know the state of health, oral health in the population of Madrid. We wanted to structure and planify a children dental care program. So we had, we had to define who, who is composing this, these units and how the human resources had to be linked to the different areas. We also defined the function and competence of dentists and, and dentists and in Spain, they are, could be called odontologos and estomatologos. We use dentists to unify these different professions because in primary healthcare is odontologo, dentists, and the hygienists. Also, we worked on something which is important. I think it's key. And, and we will, which we will see later, which is to share communication. And for this, it's important to have the data in an electronic format. So we worked on this, creating all the records in all the units in electronic format, having a specific care protocol for dental care, where we also integrated, as we're going to see later, all the prevention and health promotion activities. Because all healthcare professionals 
participate in this in the healthcare center. And if we are able to establish an electronic database and to share it, we can really achieve an interdisciplinary communication which is going to benefit the patient, as my colleagues have said already before. Also, we tried to standardize the scheduling system for adults and children. And we also wanted to define the services in the different units of oral care. Defining also these control panels, so to say. Doing an assessment, which we which took days before, now we could do in minutes. Who is doing what and what is the impact of this on the population? This is how we, well, we define the composition of these units with dentists, hygienists, in some cases also assistant nurses, if we cannot use the assistant nurse of the healthcare centers. Right now we have 85 units because yesterday we generated one additional unity of oral healthcare in, in Madrid with 155 dentists and, and these hygienists who are integrated in this primary healthcare team. Also, in 2015-2016, we did this survey about the oral status of the population of Madrid, which enabled us to see the prevalence of the different diseases in oral cavity, carriers and periodontal disease in the different groups of, of age, to be able also to, to plan strategically our activities for different groups of age and also to give value to something to something that we have had been demanding for 15 years. And we had a continuous struggle in the last 15 years to regulate the program of children dental care in the community of Madrid. So that we could support these prevention activities in the children population in order to have healthy adults through the hygiene and, and diet and, and diet habits, also routine visits with dentists and hygienists at least once a year, to have patients free of carriers and periodontal disease. And if this is not possible, at least to try to avoid the loss of teeth. Also, we wanted to work on the identif identification of other types of alteration with preventive programs. In this sense, up to last year, the units of oral health together with a physical therapist and midwives and other professionals were seen as supporting groups in primary health care and this this was strange because these professionals are not supporting anybody they're working with a citizen and are working in an integrated manner with the other professionals so we the new manager sonia martinez machuca accepted this also we defined it as specific care units in the healthcare center because they offer specific activities apart from all the other activities of prevention and promotion we're going to see now and therefore it's key that both the dentist and the hygienist in a in a inside a perfect machinery are perfectly coordinated and trained together and are integrated in the primary healthcare teams with the other healthcare professionals in these teams. So after the royal decree of 1 10 30 2006 of where the where the common services of the national health system were defined, we can see three different elements in the annex number two. Three, activities of prevention and promotion of health. Six, care and specific services for different groups of age, women's health, children, adults, elderly patients, risk factors, risk groups and chronic diseases and preventive activities. And point nine, which is care of the oral health. Why am I mentioning the three points here, not only number nine? Because in the... And, and the services we offer in primary health care Madrid, we understand that we have also, of course, we have a specific oral health care problem. But it's not the only thing that they have to do, our, our professionals. They also have to carry out activities of prevention and promotion, as we're going to see later. Why? Because it's responsibility of all the professionals in the healthcare center to carry out these preventive and promotion measures. It's very important also to share the information about our, our electronic. Uh, history clinic system which is called AP Madrid to co coordinate and integrate the units of oral care with the other professionals in the healthcare center with different activities education for health 
training activities also for dentists and hygienists together with other professionals and to establish multi-professional teams to develop some of the projects which are being implemented in the healthcare centers and of the community of Madrid. Here we can see the activities of prevention and health promotion and also referral systems. If in this prevention or early diagnosis something is detected like for example diabetes or high blood pressure or alcoholism or smoking to be able to have an internal referral system to the physician or pediatrician or the nurse of that healthcare center. So in these promotion of, of healthy habits which are established in the healthcare centers where also the oral professionals have a, a very important role we have for example different lifestyle habits smoking alcohol healthy diet physical exercise and prevention of accidents in this part here is where basically hygienists are working in this part we have developed protocols for the promotion of oral health which are multi-professional with physical thera uh, physical thera uh, ther therapists midwives pediatricians nurses to organize all these activities which are focused on the population of madrid all of them have been led by dental hygienists and they are published in, in, in an area which is accessible for all professionals of primary health care from that health care center, nurses, pediatricians, physicians, and also other professionals, hygienists from the dental units. And also here we have the pre detection of risk factors of cardiovascular disease like high blood pressure, dyslipemia, diabetes type 2, auricular fibrillation, or the measurement of the body mass index. How? Basically, through a key element which we all know of our health healthcare professionals, the clinical history of the patients. Regardless, if, if we're working in, in the department of oral health or regardless of the, if the chief complaint of the patient is an oral problem, in our departments of oral health, we will also detect other health problems which can be at an early stage right now and which can be identified in this first appointment or the following one. For this, one thing is key, which is to share the clinical history. This is an example of this AP Madrid program where we can see the preventive measures to be taken or, for example, if we're going to carry out a dental treatment, we're going to go to the od odontogram to register the situation of that patient. But we also can see the cardiovascular risk and we can check, for example, if the patient has been submitted to this, to this assessment before. And another aspect, which is also important, which is based on the treatment which we're going to perform the patient due to the local anesthesia or other local treatments which can interact with the drugs the patient are taken or which can also interact with the with the with other diseases the patient have. This is the odontogram, which can be accessed by the dentist and the hygienist, where we have the specific protocol of follow-up of the patient with different records, which are going to be focused on the detection of toxic lifestyle habits and also risk factors of cardiovascular diseases. In the odontogram, we will mark the treatments we've done to be able, first of all, to do a follow-up as dentist or hygienist of the oral pathology of that citizen, but also so that the other healthcare professionals who can access this clinical history can also share that information. And in case of doubt, if have to carry out a certain action where the dental treatment can have some repercussion, they can are able to, cons to consult with the dentist or the hygienist. Here, this last slide, I don't want to comment this, even if it's very important in the improvement of the health, primary health care and the important role of the oral professionals in this system. But, I, but I, I would like to speak only for one minute, not more, about the responsibility of the public administration, since it has to amalgam all the healthcare professionals, had to join all the healthcare professionals together. In the public health care, we've seen that, well, as, as Dr. Diaz said, we have, yes, some things could be improved and we always want to improve. Even, for example, we have almost 70% uh, 
coverage in hyper in uh, in, in in high blood pressure and in diabetes sixty eight point seven and all all that we have suffered all that we have suffer, suffered uh, last year the smoking we have a coverage of almost eighty percent because we are treating eighty percent of the population eighty percent of our, our population goes to the healthcare center at least once a year and this is a big chance for this prevention and promotion of health activities in our patient. But I'm also worried about the another part, which is the intervention of private practitioners. Who, of course, won't be able to share this information that we can have in AP Madrid. And also the activities that can be carried out in, in the dental offices, for example, in private dental offices, where they can implement. And I would like to say congratulations to SEPA for all these initiatives, which we think are going to have a huge impact on the health of the general population. But the results of these studies, of these assessments, which can turn on an alarm light, which could be visible for other professionals, public or private, there we have, are facing the problems of the communications and key elements like, like Dr. Diaz said, communication and sharing information. What tool do we, do we develop? Because if we speak about this and we speak among different institutions, all say, oh, my treasure, my precious, my clinical history, my data, I'm the owner of this. I don't share this with Adeslas or Sanitas or, or, or not even with a hospital. We have a system here, uh, which is called Horos here in Madrid, which allows to see a part of the information, but not the clinical history as such. And well, I would like to leave this just there as a final element of this exposure. I think that we have to think that the owner of the data is the person who generates it. And that's the patient. The owner of the data is the patient. And the patient has to decide who can access that information and who he wants to share it with it. Because the biggest benefit is not going to be for the professional, but for the patient. So I would like to finish with this quote. If we all take care of the health of our population, we are going to improve a lot the adult quality of life. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much for SEPA for inviting me to participate in this education program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Villares. It has been a very, very clear lecture. And it, it's so important to that somebody explains these things to us, to understand also the big effort that, that's behind it. We also all think, well, public health care had some problems, but of course it has to be a problem, but it has a lot of merits also, and that's important. And it's improving a lot, a lot. I think this is very important. So we have to thank you really for telling us all, the, all this, all the, your very real opinion about this. And secondly, also what you said about sharing, to share, to unify. I think that's the goal that we all should have. Dr. Diaz Espina said the same. Leide from the pharmacy point of view said the same. Cristina Serrano too. In a certain way, I think we have to unify our criteria and also to communicate among each other in a very simple way. Not to generate a very complex environment, especially thinking about the patient who is our main goal. This is, this is very important, very important. Before we connected live, we were saying that it's a very interesting session, this because it is like what we had in a village before, the different driving forces, the authority, the pharmacist, the physician, the dentist, the teacher, we are all here and we're not inventing anything new, but we're just offering our small contribution so that the dental profession in this case, and that in the dental profession we understand the importance we have and the importance of all the others, the other ones who are surrounding us in healthcare. Thank you very much, Jose Enrique. We don't have too much time because we already uh, ran over time, but I think it was really, really 
Re really nice decision. I couldn't say which webinar I liked most. It would be absurd, but this was a very good one. And now I, I hope that the attendants in all these webinars have understood a little bit where we are, how important we are as dentists, as hygienists, as dental professionals for the general health of the patient, that we need the other professionals too. And I think that I just have to say thank you. I hope this doesn't fall on deaf ears. And as you said the other day, well, the chances of, of being successful is 1%. Well, we have 1%. Let's go for two. Let's go for three. I don't know. But I think that with such passionate persons like Dr. Villares and the other ones, we will be able to, to do this. I just want to finish this saying thank you. Of course, thank you, thank you to the attendants, first of all, who have been standing us for the four webinars. Of course, I would like to thank the technical teams, the interpreters also, who have made it possible to make this bilingual. The speakers, of course, the whole team of Dentate, the whole team of SEPA, all of, all of you who have made, who have made this webinar um, possible. And we can fragment this and I think we can develop some things we've seen here. Develop them over time, why not? So get your vaccines, take care of yourselves. I hope uh, you, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much to all of you.